city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. We're going to stop in for Long Branch, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, might as well. There's not much going around town tonight. Who do you hope they got a Rick Martin fire going? Yeah, that wind's got a nip to it, all right. It's going to blow up worse for morning. It might. I thought old Doc might be around here, but I don't see him no place. Oh, Mac. Hi, uh, Kitty. Yes, sir. Oh, Kitty. Come on over to the stove. Oh, that's warm. It feels warm right here after that wind outside. <laughs> it goes right through you, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll ooch over by the stove, Mr. Dillon. Might be some kind-hearted stranger who'll buy me a beer. <laughs> Chester never gives up hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sit down, Kitty. If you're not busy. Oh, thanks, Matt. Don't you believe in kind of strangers? No, not since I was nine years old. What took you so long? Well, I was kind of slow growing up. <laughs> Would you like a beer? Yeah, if you'll let a kind-hearted stranger buy it. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call you a stranger, Kitty. Uh, you'll have to admit I'm kind-hearted, though. A couple of beers, Sam. All right. You think a real bad storm's coming up, Matt? Yeah, it's that time of year. I remember the blizzard last year around Christmas time. Yeah, it was a rough one, all right. <laughs> Matt, things would be rough this time of year, even if the weather weren't bad. What do you mean? Oh, holiday season. Families getting together and all just ordinary, decent, good times. Hmm. The people still live that way. Not many out here. I sure don't. Ah, oh, no kidding. I'm sorry, man. This time of year, I... I get to thinking too much. Remembering too much. That's not good, Kitty. It's a hard town. It's a hard country. Go soft and it'll kill you. I remember nights you come in here after you had to kill a man. Nights to stay till sun up, not talking, alone mostly, and... Dying a dozen deaths inside. You're as sentimental as Chester. Hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, there you are, Marshal. Shut the dog down door, Mr. Jones. You're left in all the cold. Well, I'll take you in. I'll give you up, Marshal. What? Hell up. No. Right in the old store. Well, how did it happen, Mr. Jonas? Well, the fellow come in right after closing time, man ban over his face and stuck a gun in my stomach and took everything in the cash door. Sixty-eight dollars. Well, it sure took you a long time to get around telling me about it. Well, he tied me up. Left me there in the back room. I just not got loose. You gotta go after him, Marshal. Kind of a tall order, isn't it? Trailing a five-hour head start. Well, that don't matter now, because I know who he is. I thought you said he wore a mask. He did. But I could tell by his voice and his walk and everything about him. It was Clint Doty. Clint Doty? Yeah, he's a homesteader up the river. Yeah, I know him. I know him. But I can't believe that Clint's the kind to do a thing like that. With him, all right. I'm 100% certain. Well, all right. Right out in the morning and bring him in. In the morning? If it was him, he'll be there. But, Marshal, you... Wilbur, I'm not going to ride 12 miles up that river bottom at midnight with a blizzard coming up for $68. Now, we'll leave in the morning. That's on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
to hurt us right up, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, you'd think so. You suppose he's going to hold up the house and try to shoot it out? I doubt he's not that tight, Chester. Yeah, nobody never thought he was the type to hold up Mr. Jones, neither. Well, morning, Marshal. Yes, sir. Oh, Doherty. How are you, Doherty? Come on in and sit. I, I got some coffee on the stove. Oh, well, we might warm our hands a little bit. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. <laughs> huh. I reckon Medora can rustle up some eggs inside me to gain it. Well, thanks, Doherty, but we had breakfast before we left Dodge. And you can get warm at least. <laughs> hey, what you trying to do, Marshal? Blow up a storm? That looks that way. It's been snowing since daybreak out here in the river bottoms. And with that wind blowing, it's going to start drifting. Yeah, probably will. Well, I'll heat this coffee up with it. Uh, what brings you out this way, Marshal? You, Cody? Me? Well, what do you mean? We're here to arrest you. Take you back in. What for? Armed robbery. Armed robbery? You mean that hold up at the general store? That news seems to travel fast, doesn't it? How'd you know about it? Well, uh, uh... What's uh, all this about armed robbery? Oh, you, you know my wife again. Yeah, sure. How are you, Good morning, man. I hear you accusing the client of robbery, Marshal? That's more a matter of Wilbur Jonas accusing him, man. When did this happen, Marshal? Yesterday evening, around 7 o'clock. Clint hasn't been away from this place for two days. Yeah, no, Medora. A well, wife's word might not stand for much under those circumstances, Medora. Are you calling me a liar? No, Medora, stop that. There's people seeing me in town yesterday evening. And Wilbur Jonas claims he's one of them. Oh, well, the way I heard it, the fellow that held him up was wearing a mask. He says he recognized your voice. Wilbur Jonas couldn't recognize sour apples if he had a mouth full of them. Well, I guess that'd be something for the judge to decide, ma'am. And you're, you're, you're going to take me into jail? Unless you can prove you were somewhere else at 7 o'clock last night. Well, that might be kind of hard to do, Marshal. And yeah, then we better get started. We've got a hard ride ahead of us. Oh, no, wait a minute. I can't go off and leave Medora like this, sir. With a storm coming on. Well, maybe one of the neighbors could come over and stay with her. Well, there's none closer than five miles, Marshal, and they all got plenty of troubles of their own this time of year. Well, I ain't even got enough firewood to split it up to last her more than a day and a half. I was aiming to get some laid in today. I'm sure she's made out before. Oh, well, maybe so, but, but not in her condition. Clam. Condition? What are you talking about? Well, she's going to have a baby, Marshal. Oh, for the love of... It. It's mighty hard on a woman having her man took off to jail and not even wood in the house to keep warm. <sighs> now, look, Dottie. You know, it wouldn't take no time at all if the three of us was to pitch in together. All right, Dottie, let's get at it. <laughs> Chester. Well, this cussed act needs sharpening again, Mr. Dillon. It ain't too good a steal. Uh, the marshal's got the best one. Well, you couldn't prove it by me. Oh, uh, listen, sure don't hold it to edge none. Oh, here, Chester, let me touch it up for the soap. <laughs> my gracious, that is just my teeth. If you ask me, we've already chopped enough wood to last through this winter and half of that. Stop that, don't you? That stove eats it up pretty fast. Oh, uh, Chester's right, Tony. We've chopped enough. Well, she's got to use some of it to cook with, too, you know. Yeah, it's enough here to last till she can make other arrangements. Now, let's pack it into the shed and head back for town before that snow gets any worse. Well, whatever you say, Marshal. Mister! Oh, you, Mrs. Bill, i taken on some vittles. I got some nice hot stew ready. Did you say vittles? Now, we got to get started, Madara. It's getting late. Oh, it won't do no harm to eat first. It'll make the trail shorter, Marshal. Well, my! Just look at all that firewood. I'm right obliged to you, ma'am. 
Uh, you're welcome, Medora. I reckon I'll need every stick of it, too, with this wind driving the snow in through the north wall of the cabin. Oh, dang it, I clean forgot. Forgot what? The chinkin'. The chicken? No, the chinkin'. The chinkin's all fell out of the north wall of the house. I, oh, I was aiming to fix it today. I got a lot of bark slabs cut laying out back to the barn. Now, look, don't Oh, he... it's mighty hard on a woman in Medora's condition with the snow and the sleet blowing in on it. Doty, would, would it be all right if we eat first? <laughs> Job down yeah, I'm just about through here, too. You know, that ain't a bad piece of work if I do say so myself. Oh, sir, a carpenter couldn't have done one bit better. There. I ought to keep the wind out. Oh, that looks fine, Marshal, just fine. I'm mighty obliged to you, man. Oh, that's all right. Well, I know you got your duty to do. You got to take me in, and I want you to know there's no hard feelings about it. Oh, sure, Johnny. And I appreciate the way you've been so decent. Help me get things in shape so the door will be all right here alone. Oh, it ain't many lawmen to take the trouble. Well, she's got enough problems without making it worse for her. Well, let's put the tools away and get started. It's going to be dark before we get to Dodge. Yes, sir, you sure are right about her having plenty of problems, Marshal. In her condition and all. And now, the cattle gone. The cattle gone? Oh, of course, we only had about 20 head, but with me going to prison, maybe it's... Well, it had been enough to see her through, her and the little one. What do you mean, the cattle gone? Well, I had them there in the meadow back of the corral, letting them pick clean what pasture was left. I guess they drifted off last Well, of course they drifted off. When that storm hit, they turned tail and moved along with the wind. Cattle always do that. Well, I guess it don't matter much, though. Medora couldn't take care of no how, not in her condition. Well, she could if you'd hold them in the corral there next to the barn. All she'd have to do is push the hay out of the loft door. I reckon they drifted down south there about three miles and come up against the bluffs. Oh, they'll probably mill around and freeze to death there if the storm keeps up. About three miles, huh? Mm-hmm. I was aiming to go after them, but of course, one man alone wouldn't have had much chance. All of... right, Dodie, come on. Let's go find your cattle. <laughs> Don't know how I'd have managed without you fellas helping. But we're mighty grateful to you, me and Medora both. Well, we couldn't let the cattle freeze. <sighs> well, if you wait now till I put these lanterns in the barn, we can leave any time you say. Oh, unless, of course, you'd like some hot coffee for us. Jody, it's dark now. You know as well as I do, we're not going to ride back to Dodge tonight. Well, say, in that case, maybe you wouldn't mind helping me kill and dress a couple of dozen hens. Couple dozen hens? And hang them up under the eaves to freeze. Oh, my gracious. Chicken broth's mighty good for a woman in Medora's place. Look, Dodie, we've already chopped your wood, fixed your house, and rounded up your cattle. Oh, you've been mighty decent. All right. All right, we'll help you dress your chickens. We'll... Make soap for you, salt down the pork, preserve eggs, anything you say up until midnight. Then I'm going to get some sleep. And at sunup, we're going to ride into Dodge, and you're going to jail. Keep them handy in the pocket roll. Keep your eyes open and your 
got Tommy under Tommy's control. You're especially wise during the holiday season to keep Tums nearby for quick relief from upset caused by rich foods and the hustle and bustle of holiday activities. Tums, ten cents, three roll pack a quarter. Or get the new Tums six roll pack with free metal carrier, only 49 cents. <laughs> Chester. Hey, Chester, come on, wake up. What's the matter, Mr. Nolan? You told me you're the one who's supposed to be on guard. Huh? Well, it's after daylight. I, I must doze off for a second. You'll be in a couple of hours, don't you? Please, Dodie, did he get away? No, he's in there. I just woke him up. Oh, well, I, I kind of figured he wasn't going nowhere in that storm. What storm? Why, it's over. Now, it died out during the night. You better get yourself collected, Chester. We're heading for Dodge. My, just look at that sun on the snow with you. Now, turn out to me. Them boots had out of swore. Hey, oh! What's the matter? Oh, oh, Mr. Dillon, I'm so lame, I don't even know if I can stand up straight. Well, keep trying. I swear I'm going to have to be spoon-fed for a month. I ain't never worked so hard in all my life. Hello, is anybody home? Somebody outside here. Yeah. Oh, by golly, it's dark. It's dark? Well, come on in, you old reprobate. I'm coming to tying up my horse and buggy. Well, wonder what he's doing out this way. Uh, seeing a patient, I guess. He must have left town awful early. Say, did somebody ride up? Yeah, it's dark. You about ready to leave, Billy? Oh, if you're still a mind to take me. Nothing's changed. Been hiding out. How are you, Doc? Yeah. Oh, good morning, Clint. Good morning, Doc. Get any coffee? Oh, I have some in two shakes, Doc. Medora? Yes, Clint. Will you come out and fix some coffee? Yes, Medora. What are you doing out here this time of morning, Doc? Oh, well, the Murdoch baby was acting up, touched the croup, so I spent the night there. Thought I'd just drop over and say hello to the dude as long as I was this close. You could have done that in town. I'm taking him in. You're taking him in? Well, for what? Robin Jonas General's store night before last. Robin the Jonas. Now, where'd you get that idea? Well, Jonas claims he recognized him. Wilbur Jonas hasn't got the sense the good Lord gave a gopher. Matt, they caught the fellow had done that. What? That's right. It was some drifter riding through town. He threw a lot of money into a poker game, and the boys got kind of suspicious. And he finally admitted the whole thing. So they borrowed a jail key from Judge Bent and... Lock him up until you get back. Well, Clint, didn't you tell him? Well, I... Uh, tell me what? Clint, he couldn't have done it, Matt. He was playing poker at the time with me and Moss Grimmick in the back room of the livery stable. Dodie. Uh, no, Moss, I, I didn't lie to you. You asked me if I could prove where I was. Uh, I didn't know Doc's word was actual proof. Clint, Dodie... He done that deliberate, Mr. Dillon, letting us think he was guilty just to get us to do all that work for him. And I suppose the story about your wife having a baby. Oh, that's the gospel truth, Mark. Well, it sure is, Matt. I'll vouch for that. Let me see now. It's about another six months. Let me see. Oh, around the 1st of July. 1st well. of July? Yes. I didn't say when, Marshal. And you didn't ask me. Ain't you going to wish us well? The 1st of July? So help me, Dodie, for... Two cents. Oh, oh, we might even name him after you, Marshal, if we can't think of nothing else. So oh, help. <laughs> All right. All right, Dodie. How about some of that coffee, huh? one of your merriest Christmases. Join us on CBS Radio as most of these same stations present our fourth annual Christmas Sing with Bing. Right at her husband's side, welcoming you to their holiday celebration will be Mrs. Bing Crosby, Catherine Grant. With Bing as your host, 
CBS Radio will take you to Rome to hear the Vatican Choir sing. There, too, you'll hear the sound of the bells of St. Peter's as they ring for the holiday mass. Our Christmas Sing with Bing will take you to New York and Salt Lake City, to Canada, Australia, Holland, France, and even the Fiji Islands, where carolers will sing the traditional Christmas songs with you. Celebrate Christmas with the world. Join us on CBS Radio Christmas Eve, as most of these same stations present our fourth annual Christmas Sing with Bing. Remember, this year on CBS Radio, you can spend Christmas with Mr. and Mrs. Bing Crosby. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Virginia Gregg, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. <laughs>